Hello and welcome to the second episode of Text Analysis with Python. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Spacey, a powerful NLP library, to extract meaningful insights from text and also do very common NLP tasks using Spacey. These are the topics I'm going to cover in this video. And before getting to the coding part, I'm going to explain the concepts that you will hear a lot in the NLP field or a text analysis field or in this series of tutorials. So these are the topics. We're going to learn how to install Spacey and we're going to learn how to do all these processes, all these tasks, which are very common in NLP using Spacey. And I'm going to explain what each of them is about. What is Spacey? It's a powerful and efficient library for NLP. It has pre-trained models and you can do all the common tasks, NLP tasks. Now, first we need to download some stuff and install in Spacey before being able to use it. We're going to download a pipeline, which I will explain what it means, what is a pipeline, and also install Spacey. After that, we're going to import Spacey because we already have installed it. And we're going to load that small English pipeline that I just said. We're going to create a variable that will contain this pipeline. So what is that pipeline and what it does? Well, this it, that pipeline is called EN Core Web SM for small. So it's English small uh, web, basically, pipeline. You have also MD for medium, LG for large, and TRF for transformers. We're going to use a small English pipeline. It's trained on written web text, blogs, news, comments, that includes vocabulary, syntax, and entities. So again, what is a pipeline? A pipeline is basically a sequence of steps that you take to analyze a text. Now this small English pipeline will do these things. So it gets the text and it does all these tasks on the text. It tokenizes that. I will explain what these words mean. Tokenizes, tags, parses, um, recognizes the named entities, lemmatizes and all that. And then you can save all that inside a document object. And that document will be the same text with every word of that text having a lot of information. Now, let's start by doing these two steps here. So I'm using Google Colab, which is a free coding environment, just like Jupyter Notebook. And I have installed Spacey and also downloaded the English pipeline. Then we import Spacey. And as I said, we are going to load that pipeline from Spacey and we save it inside NLP. What happens next? Next, okay, let's see here. So next, we are going to give it a text and apply that NLP on the text. So we'll have a document. So let's have a document here. I'm gonna say, call it doc, you can call it whatever. NLP, I'm going to apply that NLP that we just created here on a piece of text. That text, let's just write it ourselves. They're linguists. That's it. So this text goes into this pipeline and what is returned, this document, is going to be the same text with every word of it having a lot of information. Now let's run this pressing this play or control or shift enter. Okay, now what? What is this doc? Can I print doc? Let's see if we can. Well, apparently it's just the same text. But what is the difference between this text and this doc? Let's say we have a text, which is this. And we also have the doc right let's see their difference so let's just run this text so now the text and the doc have the same apparently string but if i check for the length of the text 
what I get is 18, but if I check for the length of the dock, I get four. Why? What is going on there? Let's check the first index of the text. What is in the first index is T. As you can see, there is T. What about the dock? What is the first index? It is day. Wow. So already our dock is a list of the words or better tokens. Let's go through these tokens. But what is a token? That is our next step. Tokenization. Tokenization is the first step in many text analysis tasks. It is it involves breaking text into individual words or other characters, such as punctuations. We call them tokens. For example, they're linguists. When you tokenize it, it will be they, R-E, because that's a different token, right? It's not just one word, that's two words. Linguists and exclamation mark. Now, let's do this. So we have this text here. Let's, we've tokenized it already by putting it inside a document. And now let's print those tokens. I can loop through them. So I can say for token or for I, we can call it whatever, in doc, let's just print token dot text. So we're gonna print the text of that token. So you can see we have they, R, E, linguists. That is very different from this text. So if I loop through this, you would see all letters will be printed. We don't want that. So now you know how to grab the tokens. We can save them inside a variable called tokens by using a list comprehension, which is something like a for loop, but much more concise. So I can say, uh, return the text of a token for token, token in doc. And then if I print that, those not words, but tokens, you can see we have these tokens here. Awesome. So we have access to all these tokens. Great. What else do we have? Lemmatization. What does that mean? A lemma is basically the root form of a word, the uninflected form of a word. What does that mean again? Well, let's say we have their linguists. You saw when we tokenize it, we would have they are linguists, exclamation mark. But when you lemmatize this, you're saying every token I want that to return to its original dictionary form. So they would be, well, they, but R is the inflected form of to be. So we have be here. Linguists is a plural of linguist. Can you guess if we had, he has a car, what that would be? Well, let's see. So I'm going to change this to um, he has, and Apple, well, better. Okay, now, so uh, we have a document, which is a spacey document. Now, I'm going to check the lemma in it. So let's just call it lemmas is equal to, again, a um, list comprehension. I would say token dot, instead of text, this time I would say lemma underscore. This is how you get grab the lemma of a specific token. Here we use text, here we use lemma underscore for token in doc, right? And then let's print out lemmas. So he has an apple. Now we have he have an apple. That is very interesting. But why do we do that? Why, why do we do this lemmatization at all? Well, for one, one, one reason is, we are reducing the size of our vocabulary a lot by lemmatizing. So imagine that you had like, he has an apple, or they have apples. So let's just write them down here. So they have an, or they have apples, and he has an apple. How many dis distinct words do we think you have here? Do you think you have? So you have they, 
we have have apples so you three here four five six seven distinct words here that increases the size of your vocabulary but if you limitize it you would only have they have apple he an so you would have only four one two three four well five instead of seven now imagine what kind of change it makes if it's like in a corpse of a million words so it makes our processes go really faster another reason is sometimes it's not that important for our analysis if there is has or there is have so we want to know for example what are the most common verbs that are used so we don't care about has or have or having so that's one reason to use lemmatization we don't care about the plural or the singular so that's why you use lemmatization you don't care about the third person goes or went or going or go you don't care about those differences so you use lemmatization so that's one of the reasons okay now the next part of speech tagging so part of speech tagging is assigning a part of speech such as a noun or a verb to each word in the text for example, they're linguists, part of the speech, they would be a pronoun here, RE would be here, it says auxiliary, uh, anyways, linguists, noun, and exclamation mark punctuation. So now, how do we do this in Spacey for this? He has an apple, well, remember this doc from NLP, so we have access to all the information on every token, right? So let's just say poses is equal to again the list comprehension token dot pose pose underscore that's if you want to take the text of pose for token in doc so now if i uh yes print this you see we have a pronoun we have a verb determiner noun and punctuation for he has an apple so he has an apple exclamation mark so this is how you get also the part of speech of a text now next named entity recognition so it is the process of in identifying and classifying named entities such as people organizations and locations in a text for example this sentence Noam Chomsky was born in the US in 1928 Spacey can recognize names of people, uh, countries, places, dates, numbers. So let's just, instead of this doc down below, let's have another one like Gnome, oops, Gnome Chomsky was born in the US in 1928. So this is going to be our document now. And what are we gonna do on it? We're gonna check the entities named uh, entity recognition, right? That's a process. So we can say print, or let's just say, yeah, print doc.ents. Uh, you, you can see that we have Noam Chomsky, US 1928, right? So we have these entities, but we can be a bit more elaborate so for um i don't know end yeah or for token for token in doc dot ends so for every entity in that document we're going to do something we're going to print the token dot text and the text of that entity and token dot end a label actually yeah that label now Look at this. So we have Noam Chomsky is a person. US is a geographical entity. 1928 is a date. That is great. So you see, it recognizes that US is not us, like us, them, you. No, it's, it's the name of a country. It can recognize that. That's amazing. So that is also something you can do. Now, um, oh, by the way, there's something more interesting to do it in a kind of a more visualization type of way, and that is using displacy. 
So we can use a uh, from Spacey, we're going to import Displacey module, and this Displacey is going to display this in a much better way. How? Let's we're going to use Displacey.render, and it's going to render the document, and the document is going to be this sentence, right? And we're going to set it a style. So the style is going to be NER, or I guess ENT actually, or ENT, yeah, I guess, well, let's say ENT. And Jupyter Notebook, we're going to set it to true so that it will uh, display an image right here for us. So it's going to render an image. So display C, not display, display, and look at this, beautiful. So we have Noam Chomsky as a person. US so you can see this does it inside here and it highlights these um, named entities that's amazing okay now the next thing we're gonna we're gonna look at is dependency parser although I, I would I prefer um, stanza stanza's dependency parser I think that's much more accurate honestly but uh, this is also great so a dependency parser is basically examines the dependencies or relations between the words of a sentence to analyze its grammatical structure. So it looks, for example, what is the relationship between Chomsky and wrote, for example? It's a nominal subject. What about the structure, syntactic structure? Is the direct object of this verb? So that is what it does. So let's let's see how we can do this. So I'm going to uh, use another doc, let's say NLP again, and we can say Chomsky, Chomsky, Chomsky wrote the syntactic structures. That is one of his groundbreaking books, structures. Yes, correct, yeah. Okay, so this is our document now. And I'm going to uh, check the dependency relations here. So I would use um, print doc dot. No, not like that. Actually, it doesn't have it. So okay, let's display it. So display c dot render, and it's going to render doc. The style we're gonna set to dep for dependency and Jupiter to true. And this is what we have. This is great. Okay, now this is one way to display it. So we have nominal subject. And if you want to know what these mean, these universal dependency relations, you can go to this website, universaldependencies.org forward slash u forward slash dep forward slash index.html and you can see a list of them for example nominal subject you can see a whole definition here now if you want to um, use it in a different way you can loop through it you can say for uh, token dot dep underscore uh, no sorry for token in doc print token dot dep uh, and also token.text so that we know. So here you can see Chomsky is the nominal subject, wrote is the root, determiner, adjective modifier is syntactic, uh, uh, direct object structures, and we have punctuation here. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that was it. That was it for this episode. We just went through uh, some of the applications of Spacey and how we can use that to analyze texts. Uh, in the next video, I will use a real world text to analyze and I will show you how to uh, gain much better insight than these simple examples here. I hope you liked the video. Uh, please don't forget to just press the like button and share it with others. Thank you very much for watching and listening.